This is David Craig for Urban Scott TV. We're up in Aberdeen in Mashulu. It's a Monday night and I'm hanging out with Marnell and Dan Sack and Scooby Spit. Hello. Hello. Listen, I read today a bit of doing research. I really put some work into this by the way. Nice. It looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Got a bit of a problem at the bottom because I ran out of ink. So, uh, no. it'll, it'll, be, it'll be half okay and then it might get shit towards the end when I've got to improvise. Yeah. Could we'll roll with it. I'll make some stuff up. <laughs> tell a few jokes. But you guys, you've been described as. The Electro Maestro and the Beer Before, which I thought was pretty cool. How do you feel about that? It's pretty so, yeah, yeah. It yeah. does the job. Yeah. Oh, I have a beer. That's exactly you what it says on the team. Maestro. Yeah. So you're happy with all of that? Do you want to add anything to the description? No, no, I like it. I like it. If, if we add anything, it just takes hours because we just add loads to the description and it's too easy. Yeah. But the beer seems to get quite a lot of press, unusually. It does, it does. It's, it's looking into its own light. Like, a TV career, That's so it's yeah. got its own press team and it definitely media. Is on MySpace page. Yeah, you know, yeah it does. It's, it's not there yet, but it'll get there, I'm sure. So how did Hookup come about? When did you two meet and when you decided you were going to work together? Um, we kind of, I booked him to come and play in Reading a couple of years ago, and in between him playing, I did some remixes and that solo stuff, and we just went from there. So it's been fairly easy to, to get the whole thing going. Yeah, yeah, we just kind of, because we're both doing what we do on our own for so long, it's sort of just continue quite much together. And it just all, yeah, it all did seem to happen really easily and naturally. I mean, <coughs> I mean, the song we're most known for is And That Should Always Kill, and that was like the first track we wrote together. So right. we wrote a song, we made a video for 200 quid, and it all went from there. So there's always so tales happened. about how hard. The yeah. music industry is so it's like no, it's not. You, you make a song online. Yeah, I mean, so then, when you're making music, though, because it seems to me that you make you don't really make a music for popular consumption. You're making music no. that's that's in your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Were you surprised that it's music made for art consumption, which just what seems to happen that other people want to consume it too? But then you. you, you, you because of that, it made it surprising that it did seem to have some commercial mm. appeal. Because uh, again, the two on their own, like uh, electronica, kind of a, a, a beaty stuff and spoken word, neither of them are very commercially viable. At beards all. are not that viable. It, no, a, a beard's I had sideburns for a long time, they're not that popular. I mean, if you could make a beard cool, you could probably a, do Apparently, it. beards. Uh, becoming to get big in 2008. Of course, what I say, when the first single came out in 2007, you know, the beard, we preempted the beard thing, so you did one. You've actually got just a mate, nice. impressive beard. I mean, see, when it gets to that stage, it gets a little bit edgy for me. I need to get that. Nah, so, so. But I'm not talking about beards, so we'll probably shout out. So, yeah. <laughs> so, how do you describe your sound, first of all? Uh, it's a. Um, a lecture maestro and a bearded poet. Yeah, that's that's how Dan would describe it online. Which, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it's just a fusion of. I said it's it's really hard to put a name, but it doesn't fit into any uh, one genre, and we haven't been cheeky enough to make up a new raid name or new poetry. Uh, new poetry. That's just yeah, yeah it's a bit like new Essex. New, new, new Essex. <laughs> new Essex. New car. surprise for us how well it, it kind of went across because we wrote and you know, we consciously didn't assign any of the, the, the record deals available to us until uh, we finished it because we wanted to make the album for us we didn't want any yeah. pressure to change songs this way or that way um so you just put the first one out as a solo project and um, well no no we uh, we uh, we record uh, we wrote and recorded it and and then we signed our record deal okay. uh, once it was already complete and then uh, so it was nice to get a good a good reactions in the unusual room. to be able to do something so, on your own terms Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, I don't think that we, we just were really aware that if we got, if we signed to a label early on, we would have been controlled by what they saw us to be. Mm. You know, they would have put us in a pigeonhole and 
to work within that. And it was kind of nice just to write it as we wrote it and then find the people who understood it and enjoyed it the most. It's kind of it's so of progression from the first record, then, I mean, what, what direction are you taking the, the second album and the second one? Just to see some changes. Yeah, that's, it's not really a planned. I mean, we didn't plan this already. It's, it's already a planned uh, progression. But I think the only goal is that we are both uh, want to just continue to improve. Yeah. So again, as as a writer, I want to try and uh, push it further and improve. <coughs> and and Dan the same. I think we both. That first album was great, but it was so kind of early, and so mm. it was uh, when uh, we were both uh, learning kind of our new sound. Kind of, I hadn't I worked over electronic type beats before, mm. and then I hadn't I really worked with vocalists on this mm. kind of music before. So I, I, I hope it will just be a natural a progression and yeah. get better and better, as opposed to choose a direction musically or artistically. You do just limit yourself if you think oh, yeah. I'm going to write an album and it's going to have guitars on it and all that. Isn't mm. it? You know, you just let it come as it comes. And then so is that how it happens usually? Do you think it's like that? Pretty much see what direction yeah. takes you. Yeah, at the end of the day. It, it completely. I mean, it's just yeah. It's, uh, it, uh, like on the first album, or when we were first uh, uh, working together before an album was in the head, a uh, uh, Dan would just give me a CD with like t a 10, 12 beats on, and I'd s a skip through and literally I listen to the beginning of a lot of them just to see which ones ex like uh, grab me straight off, and yeah. then it'd be uh, d develop through them and, and go further. So it's uh, I mean. The thing about your music for me is it's quite thought provoking. You know? There's nothing passive about it. Every time mm. you turn on whichever song it is, there's, I'll be just nodding ahead along to the beat, and then there's someone in the lyric that'll capture me. Yeah, cool. So that's, that's kind of the aim, it's just trying to be a bit uh, challenging and make uh, the listener think of it and, and challenge it. I mean, it's great because uh, with a dance beat, uh, there's always uh, going to be that, you know. A really wide, a very bed that you can just get into the beat and just enjoy it. But hopefully, lyrically, there will be a point that if you want to focus more, you can take something from it and think yeah, about it. Yeah. So, what kind of concepts have we got on your record? Then? I mean, <laughs> yeah. we've been through the last one long yeah. culture, religion. There's been some depressing stuff on the last one. Uh, uh, this one, I've, the f I've just finished a track about um, spousal abuse. Yeah. And one, another one about a heroin addiction. So just really sunny, cheery, yeah. cheery yeah. stuff as ever. Yeah. Yeah. There's one about words. There's one about words and beats. Yeah. There's the grass trek forward. Isn't there something about a guy in a glass house? There's a yeah. I've I've just finished one that's like, but I wanted to write a fable. I, I like you read all the old weird fables where it's a weird little story. It doesn't make that much sense in places, and it's a bit. Unbelievable in places, but it's got kind of a story and a moral kind of that on there. Mm. So I've written a weird, a weird fable. So how does that translate live? And how do you change? How do you change the live show to accommodate? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, who knows? I mean, yeah. at, at this time, I think we're going to have some time off to actually plan yeah. a bit more. Because from when we first wrote that show, we we're pretty much gig constantly. So mm. a lot of our creative live show stuff has been our ways of me thinking of creating ways to have the words in front of me because I've only just written a song and I've not had a chance to yeah. so, so, so things like we I do one song as a news reader and I'll sit there reading it's because I need to think of a way to have the words in front of me. Yeah. Uh, that's always a cue I do it with a big a big Bible, got the words in it. So, so that, was, well, that was on the I think the Carson Yeah on Carson yeah, yeah, yeah. So again like how did that